So uh, welcome to this session, which is uh, about some cool uh, innovations about on uh, how we can use uh, social media platforms like uh, uh, Messenger, uh, WhatsApp, and so forth to interact with uh, DHS2. So uh, this morning, the team from uh, East Tanzania and East uh, West and Central Africa, we have the opportunity to share the work they have done in terms of uh, using this uh, uh, social uh, uh, media networks to interact with uh, DHS2. So uh, I'm uh, sort of leading this session with uh, together with uh, Wilfred. So Wilfred, if you have uh, some words for the audience. Thank you, Adam. Uh, good morning, everyone, again. Yeah, um, we are glad to kind of uh, be here to kind of present uh, some of the innovations which we have been able to develop based on the needs from the our local implementations. And I think a team from West Africa and East Tanzania will be showing you some of the these cool innovations and how we have kind of come up with them, but also how we are using them in some of the implementations which uh, we are doing. Uh, we are going to have four sessions. Uh, we'll start with the East Tanzania, and then, of course, um, after that, his West Africa will take over for other innovations which are happening there. So for us in the presentation, um, I think the first presentation will be coming from Eric Chingalo, his Tanzania, and he'll be presenting on WhatsApp Messenger. Welcome, Eric. Good morning. Okay, so I'm uh, Eric uh, Chingalo. I'm a systems developer from HISP Tanzania. And today I'll be uh, walking you through the analytics messenger part of the session. So our presentation is going to look at uh, these areas. First, the motivation behind this analytics messenger, but also what is DHS2 analytics messenger? And for those who uh, weren't here last year, this was uh, the app competition uh, winner. This was the application. So we're also going to see the lessons that we have learned from that presentation, the impact of this analytics messenger so far. And of course, we need to have a demo of what has been done until today. So uh, this screenshot comes from uh, my phone today early in the morning. I just woke up and then decided to see my screen time. So it's more like an aggregation of my phone and my computer. And as you can see, uh, WhatsApp is the most used app in my phone. Most of us are using this WhatsApp for communicating, but in places like Tanzania, we are using it to also share, uh, to also share information uh, in health-related uh, 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 sector. And this was firstly uh, seen in COVID-19, where most of our uh, reporting uh, facilities, we are sharing uh, daily reports on the WhatsApp groups to more like uh, have accountability in data collection. So this is where the motivation started. We are all using social medias, but something that is very interesting also is our, my favorite thing about DHS2. The first thing is the analytics engine. It's very powerful. Like, most of us are using DHS2 to do greater things out there. But something else that even Scott uh, mentioned uh, yesterday, DHS2 has this extensibility feature. So combining the social media motivation together with the powerfulness of DHS2, that's where uh, here at HISP Tanzania, we decided to come up with this idea of uh, DHS2 analytics messenger. So basically, this is just uh, 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 the platform that allows you to send uh, DHS2 analytics to your users just by using WhatsApp. How does it work? It's only by using two functionality. The first one is the push analytics, of course, where you are able to send your analytics to targeted users. And I remember again, I would like to recall again to what we had yesterday from Scott. He told us uh, most of us in the morning, we didn't open the dashboard, but some opened the uh, the emails. But interesting enough, I know probably 90% of you have opened your WhatsApp today. So this is also a, uh, an opportunity to use 
uh, WhatsApp and other platforms to send uh, DHS to analytics. But another interesting part is the analytics chatbot, which is more like an interactive way for you to query for any information that you want from DHS to. I know most implementations are moving into using uh, health portals to have public data available publicly. So now with the analytics messenger, this can also be even more closer to the user such that uh, whatever information that you have configured to be available to your users can be easily accessible by just chatting uh, using the WhatsApp analytics messenger. So as I said before, uh, we had this application developed uh, last year and we presented and won the DHS2 annual conference uh, app uh, award. But from last year to today, probably most people were excited to see where does this app, uh, where did this app go? So uh, there are a couple of lessons that we have learned throughout this process. The first of them being uh, the high demand of putting this data, uh, DHS2 data into uh, social media. And uh, we have already, uh, among the things that we have approached that we have decided to take from the previous annual conference was to use collaboration to make this app reach where we are targeting it to reach. So we had collaborated with the HISP nodes. Uh, we had a, uh, an open session for testing. And actually, uh, furthermore, we went further to discuss with uh, HISP Rwanda, uh, together with HISP West Central Africa, who uh, they had set it up to their instances. And we are currently right now uh, seeing on how we can actually implement it uh, in Rwanda use case together with Tanzania. But also an, another important lesson that we have learned is uh, data privacy, of course. Most of our organizations, are, sorry, our ministries are, have concerns concerning the data privacy, but this was well uh, handled within DHS2 Analytics Messenger where you are only uh, uh, putting uh, selected information to be publicly available. So everything is under your configuration of which is supposed to be available to, the, uh, to your users. So what are the impacts of this analytics messenger so far? Uh, the major impact is uh, it has streamlined the data use of DHS2, within DHS2. So since right now uh, you can just have a simple conversation with a WhatsApp number to get whatever information that you want to get, uh, that allowed most of our high, high level uh, uh, leaders from our ministries to have access to the information with very easy. So this has been a very uh, ground changing uh, uh, feature and our users have had positive feedback from it. So yeah, we, we have I've tried to show you where we have come from to where we are right now. Uh, we, have, I could, we have done a lot to this uh, application. Before we had challenges like how to setting up and everything, but with collaboration with his Rwanda, we were able to come up with a better approach to streamline the process for uh, installation of this whole service. And soon enough, we're going to have it uh, publicly available for others user, other users to start using it. But for the sake of this demonstration, we could probably uh, try to get a walkthrough of how this uh, DHS2 analytics messenger works. So I'll divide the demonstration into two parts. The first part being the uh, push analysis, where we're going to see how, uh, as data manager, you can be able to send your analysis to your users. So, uh, uh, for uh, you could you could just scan this QR code. I'll also have this uh, posted later on, but it's going to join you to this uh, group. Uh, we are going to use it for demo purposes. Afterwards, you you have you have you will feel free to leave the group. But for demonstration, uh. I'll project it later on a bit, sorry. Oh. Oh. Yeah. So this analytics messenger is more of the web application in one part, but also there is an engine that handles the whole communication with WhatsApp. So most of the time we're going, to, as the data manager is going to interact with the, uh, with the analytic messenger web application, which does the configuration of the connections to the WhatsApp, but also it also does the whole process of push analysis. And is, for those who were able to come to the uh, last year's uh, demonstration, things were a bit tedious when it comes to setting it up. So right now we have a service uh, we won't go to that part today, but we have a service where you can generate a token 
And through that token, you just you'll be able to connect your DHIS2 and the uh, analytics messenger. So the only thing that you're supposed to do is just to paste your token here and you get the access. Once publicly available, I know all of you are going to have a chance to actually explore and see how we can use this technology. But what's very interesting for our presentation today is our configuration of which data is going to be available being done. And it's very simple with just few clicks. What you're supposed to do uh, is to select a group of data that you want. Actually, the first step is to create those visualization within DHIS2. So as I said before, the innovation of the motivation of this app was to utilize that powerful analytics of DHIS2. So what we allow you is to use the existing uh, 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 visualizations. And from there, you are able to say which ones you want to be available within your, your instance. So it's as simple as just creating a group. For this demo, I'm just going to say test group. But yeah, then you can select uh, any indicator that you want. Uh, sorry. So for instance, uh, HMIs, and with just a simple save like this, these visualizations will be available for other users to use. So this is a very crucial step because as I say, data privacy was a challenge, but through this, we're going to say which data you want to be publicly available to your users. So uh, to jump straight into the first part where I asked you guys to probably join a group and see if we can get those visualizations, uh, how do you do the push analytics? So again, this app is meant to be very easy, simple to be adapted. You just have to pick some few, sorry. I'll have to move this up. So, so pushing, uh, cr creating a push analytics is as simple as just naming your push analytics. And we're doing this because there's an extra feature that can help you schedule these analytics such that, let's say you want your analysis to be sent every noon or every month you can be able to set it. So we are going to name our analytics as uh, DAC 2024. And then again, as I said before, we had configured which data we want to be publicly available. So from here, you can select whatever that you want. I'm more interested on uh, the relationship between uh, malaria and, uh, and, and climate health. So, and then from there, uh, after selecting a group, you will see you are able to select now exactly what visualization that you want. So let's say for instance, I want, uh, my group to get all these informations, the malaria cases confirmed with respect to precipitation, air, temp air temperature, and relative humidity. And also we give you a room to give more description of your data. So let's say uh, this, sorry, this is climate data. Sorry for the typo. Yeah. So with these few steps of your description and uh, selecting your visualization, uh, you can now say, whom do you want to send this visual, uh, sorry, this uh, analytics. We have made it even more better for you because we are giving you room to either select directly from DHIS2 users. We know DHIS2 has the user configuration where you can set your details over there. So you'll be able to say, probably let's say you want to send this to some users like uh, John Cabejo, so I won't use this because I don't know their numbers. We couldn't confuse, confuse them. But we're also giving you a room to also send to a particular phone number that you want. So you can just type your random phone number here. I'll try mine. I hope you're not going to text me later on. <laughs> yeah. So you can type the number as simple as that. It's going to be added. But also what's very fascinating is as I said, people are using these WhatsApp groups to communicate DHIS2 out there. So we, we are also giving you room to select the groups that you already have within your DHIS, sorry, your phone number. So based on the uh, configuration, I said we are, we are setting up a token, we, we allow you to connect your phone number that you're going to use. So that phone number will give you the groups from that phone number. So this phone number is already assigned some groups over there. So for this demonstration in the group that I've shared you, it's called this uh, DAC uh, DAC 2024 analytics messenger. You can just select it and paste uh, and, and click add. And with that, with just those simple clicks, you are able to now send your uh, visualizations. So for those who were able to join, for the sake of those who didn't join, I'm going to just save without sending and then allow you guys to uh, scan this QR code one last time. 
so that we can try to see if what we have configured is going to be available to you guys. As people are scanning, something that we also were able to change during this uh, one year is to actually make sure we are supporting all the visualizations that are supported by DHIS2. And that being the case, we uh, took the DHIS2 analytics uh, engine for creating the visualization and actually mimics that uh, 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 logic into our system so that what you are seeing in DHIS2 will be exactly what you are going to see within your, uh, within your WhatsApp. But also something else that was very, uh, uh, that we are still working on, as we can know, maps and, and maps and, uh, maps and uh, other visualizations are considered as different when it comes to analytics. So that's something we are trying to explore later on to see how we can also support maps within this analytics messenger. But I believe now most of you have joined, so I'll go ahead and try to send this. So sending again, it's very simple. You just have to just click send. It's going to actually ask you to confirm that I'm going to send to these kind of people. And from there, soon enough, it's going to generate those visualizations, uh, prepare you the picture for those visualizations, and actually it's going to send you ones. So those clicks, I believe, means that you'll be receiving those visualizations. So things become as easy as that. But this is more like a manual process. So how can this be automated? So to automate this, uh, we also allow you to set schedules. And because we know most people are not as technical, so this is divided to different options. You can use our predefined ones, like every five minutes, every two minutes, every one hour every this time in the morning. But we also give you rooms to choose the custom ones. So you can say uh, at an hour, which minutes, and then you can just configure it as simple. But for those technical ones, you can also put a cron. For those who are dealing with the, uh, uh, with the scheduler within DHS2, you know how to prepare these cron expressions. So you can just put your cron expression and based on that cron expression, it's going to send those visualizations at that particular time. So I wouldn't dig deep much into this uh, because we still have other presentations from uh, West, uh, West Central Africa, my friend Sakibu. So I, I, I'll just go direct into the second part of my demo, which is the, uh, the chatbot. So this, again, it's uh, a way where you as the user can now by yourself request whatever information that you want. And this, again, we, 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 we we are actually going to test it ourselves. So I won't have the showcasting of the demo, but what you can do is just simply, for those who are, uh, who are ahead of us could actually re, uh, go inbox that number that has sent the, uh, the visualization in the group and try to chat with it. How do you start is just to say hello, but if you didn't join the group, you can just scan this code and it will take you directly to the conversation with that. So from there, just by following those simple steps, you'll be able to get you whatever visualization that was configured to be publicly available. So that's more like something that you can try within your own time for the sake of time. But to wrap up this presentation, uh, we are currently working hard to make sure that this is becoming publicly available to other places. But so far we have started working with the Ministry of, Tan of Health Tanzania and uh, the Ministry of Health from Rwanda with the collaboration from the HISP, uh, from the HISP Rwanda group. So uh, that's uh, wrapping my presentation. I don't know if you're going to have questions now or later on. Yes. Okay, thank you, uh, Eric, for the, this uh, great presentation. Uh, can you hear me? Oh, okay, thank you. <clears throat> so, let me do that.
I have like a, a delay of my presentation, so. You need to share the screen. Yeah, that's fine. So you need to add me. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, quickly. So we are going to talk about uh, uh, three use case, maybe two, but uh, one of them will be. Uh, related to, let's say that uh, we are in some situation where we want to do early notification, like uh, when COVID happening and uh, people in on field want to report a case, a situation where they have like uh, some risk of uh, um, contaminations. Usually in countries, what we have is uh, a call center where people can call and describe what uh, they wanted to report, okay? But sometimes you can see people just called, but uh, they, don't, they, are, they are talking about something else without uh, giving you real information. So what we try to do is uh, we think, and also with these uh, call centers, um, countries they didn't know how to collect this information and make analysis to say, yes, that is uh, how many calls we had during that time. And that is uh, uh, the calls was related to this or this or this. So what we try to do is uh, to make like uh, automated server vocal, which one allow people like a public to call a number and based on some specifications, like of some questions and uh, um, a workflow they can just uh, select one or two for to, to answer these questions. So we are going to do a demo for that. But this kind of uh, uh, vocal server also, we can do the same things with uh, the WhatsApp as well. So what we are going to do is uh, to make um, a real demo so you can better understand. Uh, one minute. Uh, I can just... Uh... Share a screen. Yeah. Yeah. So let's consider this kind of uh, a flow. So first of all, the, peer, the, the, the person on the field can just dial a local number. Here we are just putting uh, uh, 7017 for like uh, a short code or short number usually you have in countries. And then when um, the caller will uh, uh, send this uh, short uh, number, you will have like a welcome message, which one allow him either to select if it will, you want to uh, deal with uh, the server in French or in English. So mind that this kind of language can be done in local language. So if we are doing like uh, in Tanzanian, so we can add like a Swahili language or something like that. And all the workflow, the other workflow can be still on Swahili and so forth. So for the demo, we chose the French and the English because we know that people here either understand the French or uh, the English. So what I'm going to do is just uh, to test it. Yeah. Okay. One minute. I think there is. Oh, it's not coming. <laughs> Okay. Well, from someone, I don't understand some what is going on. <laughs> 
maybe we can go to WhatsApp and then come back to this uh, uh, voice one. But basically, uh, by the voice, we can have this kind of workflow. Yeah. So let me go back to WhatsApp side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, maybe share my screen again. Yeah. Okay. Can you see my screen? No. Okay. That's fine. Okay. So here is uh, the WhatsApp uh, bot for the same situation. So you can scan by yourself. Is this working? Okay. Okay, and uh, you can put. Uh... Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Don't mind of the name dollar. <laughs> okay. Okay. Have you seen the, the, the how things are going? So the first of all is to put alert, and then you have a questions coming up, and then you can follow up each steps until to end. It's not working. Okay, maybe I can just uh, stop. Yeah, so maybe I can come to, yeah. So I didn't put all the algorithm there, but to the voice side, you have all the, <laughs> the steps, but at least, yeah. Yes. Okay, okay, that's fine. So. <laughs> okay, so that means that uh, there is some improvement we can do, but uh, yeah, it's not an issue, <laughs> at least. Yeah, I think uh, what one. So if we want to report uh, the alert and so forth, you can do it and so forth. Okay. Please. Ah, maybe you need to pay before to have it, but don't worry. <laughs> but again, that one is to allow people to report cases and so forth. And this kind of question, so you can customize it yourself and so forth until to have what you have, uh, you need. So, um, so what we are doing, either by your vocal side and the WhatsApp, this kind, all this uh, information, you are filling will automatically send into the DHS2. Okay. So let me share uh, my DHS2 um, like this. Yeah. So what we put behind is like uh, a small form into the DHS2 where everything, if it is coming by vocal side, vocal server, uh, WhatsApp bot, and also by SMS. I didn't choose to make uh, this uh, uh, demo for SMS, but all of that can come into your DHS2 like this. So by since everything is coming into the DHS2, that means we can also add like uh, uh, a notific program notifications. Like if someone send a case automatically behind, program notification can send into some specific uh, users group saying that another there is some person who declare a new case or something like that behind. And the good part of that will, will be, since with DHS2, we can do analytics things with, okay? Uh, we can just uh, come on the analytics side like this. Uh, again, what is it? Yeah.
okay, like this. So on your dashboard now, you can see how many alerts you got into your system. What will be the channel you receive this kind of alert if it's coming by SMS or it's coming by a vocal server or the vocal bo uh, WhatsApp bot, all of that can come. Since also with uh, what you are doing, when you put one, it will ask you if you want to report for human or animal. Because this kind of example, it is made for the One Health situation because we, want, we wanted in mind to have like uh, uh, report cases for the One, one Health uh, situations. So we can also see the description by sector if people report uh, alerts uh, relating to human agriculture or uh, animals and so forth. And yeah, who is uh, the reporter? But also what we have in mind is that saying for each channel sending information, we can have it into the DHS2. And then if you can see also on my uh, uh, form, all the numbers who report the case can be reached after. So here we can see the phone number of uh, who report the case. So if you want to follow up after, you can just go back and call these numbers or to send them a message and so forth. Yeah. Ah, that is uh, some internet issue. Now I see what was the issue. Okay. So that one is... Um, sending information from WhatsApp to the DHS2. Now you have the second way, like uh, my colleague uh, Eric shared regarding the analytic side. You can also from the DHS2 request information by WhatsApp. So for that kind of use case, this one will be a teaser, a teaser for that because we have this section for tomorrow as well. Uh, into education side. Yeah. And then you will see here the WhatsApp bot for education contest where well, we were thinking that um, since now we are collecting data into the DHS2 for students and uh, regarding their exams, that means we can, uh, and also we know that uh, a lot of students now has WhatsApps. They don't need to go to the school or the uh, exam centers to get to their exams results. They can be at home, request by WhatsApp if uh, the success or the failed or something like this, okay? So that means uh, the Ministry of Education can share a number, which one the student can reach and uh, uh, check here what is uh, their results. So this one also, you can scan it. Ah, okay. So when you finish to scan, just tell me because uh, it's not your brothers who are going are doing this exam. So I need to give you a list of uh, names so you can test by yourself. Is it okay? Yeah. So then here is uh, some examples of. Uh, names and uh, um, table number. I don't know if that is the name in English. Okay, so you can try this kind of, uh, yeah, what's up what also. So the first of all will be to give uh, And then here you have uh, three type of uh, exams. The first, uh, the primary one, uh, the middle and the high school. 
So this one was done by for Togo, for example. So currently, primary didn't do yet uh, their exams. That's why we put not available. But the others can be there, and uh, you can check. Yeah. Is working or uh, Please? Yeah, okay. I don't know which one is which. That? Yeah, okay. That's fine. So this one, it is a short example, but... Uh, for the session of tomorrow, we'll give a uh, uh, more name because I have education guys here. They will provide the names and uh, <laughs> exams. Yeah. Please? Yeah, it's not available. Okay, maybe that one be. <laughs> Who has the results? Uh, yeah, okay. That's fine. So maybe this one will, so we can find training for your session, don't worry. <laughs> okay. So that is some kind of examples we want to show you regarding interact with uh, the others uh, uh, kind of uh, platform. The first one is vocal. Maybe we'll have a expert launch for the vocal one so we can restart it again. Yeah. And But also saying that we can either get information by WhatsApp or sending information into WhatsApp or the, the others uh, um, uh, social media. Currently, we are just doing it with WhatsApp, but we can just thinking also beyond the WhatsApp going to Telegram and Messenger, but that one can be the same way, the same thing for the analytics uh, side as well. Yeah. So I think that is uh, something we wanted to share with you. We will uh, maybe provide this kind of expert launch for the same things again. Yeah. Mm. I think something uh, happened. At least I was testing for the. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was trying the. The first demo uh, mm -hmm. on the uh, this notification, and I think it was it didn't go through because it was just after one or two questions. He's saying that thank you for reporting. I don't know if uh, this was the case for everyone. Normally, it's supposed to ask subsequent questions like, uh, "What kind of uh, uh, event are you do you want to notify? Is it uh, diarrhea, uh, death, or uh, vomiting, animal death? These kind of questions. You go through a series of questions." And then at the end, it thanks you and send that data back to the system. So I don't know if someone was able to do it or if it's uh, something wrong with uh, the the demo version that we are using here. Because I've seen it, I know that it's working. So I just want to let you know that we were not able to go through. Okay. So I think it is time for questions. Yeah. Hey, uh, Eric. Yes. Um. Thank you very much, Sakibu. Um. And the team. My name is Sidi Ahmed Jalo. I'm from the Ministry of Education in the Gambia. So um. Thank you for all of these innovations. I'm seeing a lot of use cases for for us in the Gambia, including um. 
We had a reporting for destroyed classrooms, you know, sexual harassment reports, you know, a lot of reports, postings reports, like you've already seen that we have started to do in the country. So I just wanted to confirm one, what kind of um, um, setting up does this require with the telecom companies? Or is this something that you can do independently? And just to confirm, because in any of your examples, I've not seen where data has been requested. For example, it is it's going to be interesting to know if you are reporting a classroom damage, maybe how many of those classrooms are affected, for example. So is this possible? Is it able to say, okay, give me the number of classrooms that are affected. You say 10 and it stores 10. Thank you. Yeah, okay. I didn't get well the questions, but uh, maybe you can repeat again the questions because I didn't have it yet. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. the first question is in terms of setting up, what kind of collaboration or what kind of um, things do you need to do? With, does it involve, how much does it involve the telecommunication companies that are supposed to relay this, these messages? Or is this something that you can do alone? You know, from uh, by your own at the level. You are talking about for WhatsApp, what or which one? Yeah, all of this because okay. what the key thing is, you are using tele telecommunications uh, telephone numbers. So yeah. is it just over the internet, or do you need to involve um, okay. the telecommunications company? Okay, yeah. I I can answer directly. Oh, uh, okay. So first of all, it is very maybe regarding to the voice. Vocal, vocal one, maybe this one you can interact with uh, uh, the network guys. But the WhatsApp side, it is like uh, usually how you are doing your WhatsApp. You don't need like uh, just buy data and uh, it is okay. You can now just know which number to reach and so forth. Maybe this one will not be the dollar number you just see, but it will be like uh, something uh, enterprise, like uh, enterprise WhatsApp or something like this. Business WhatsApp, if I can say that. The Minister for Health uh, for Education can provide, also people can reach it and just uh, send. But when it regarding to voice one, this one now you can maybe deal with for the network and uh, see how they can bring information to a link because there is a setup to be done. For example, for the WhatsApp, uh, for the voice one, we can use like uh, there is some equipment to convert the voice to IP and so forth. This one now can be discussed with uh, the network as well. If not, you can also do it yourself. If you have uh, some kind of uh, uh, equipment and uh, set up a lot of numbers or something like this. But at least when we are using a short code behind, there is uh, a list of uh, real numbers, which one can uh, take it through the IP and convert it into the DHS too. Yeah. So maybe maybe to add up on that, uh, uh, just to add up on the aspect mm -hmm. of the WhatsApp. So uh, for how we implemented it is more like how we are using the WhatsApp web. So you have your phone number, you just go to your web app and then mm -hmm. scan. So the setup process is as seamless as that because behind the scene, all that's happening is more like what we are doing in WhatsApp web. So no extra hassle. But the only thing that we ended up uh, noticing is it's more safer to use, a, as uh, Sakibu said, uh, a business uh, WhatsApp account, whereby you have more broader options to uh, interact with more numbers at the same time. Because when it comes to uh, working with the huge instance, like let's say education or like the analytics messenger, you're going to have lots of traffic. So to be in a safer side, it's better to use the WhatsApp uh, business number. Hi, um, yeah. okay, that's fine. I've still seen how to reach my vocal so, one. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, that was supposed to be seen actually in the uh, disease or even notification part. But you still have possibilities to, I mean, you'll be asked questions. For instance, in your case, uh, you can you you can be asked how many classes or how many students are affected by X Y Z. Then you enter the number. If you say ten, then the ten, the figure ten will be reported and uh, 
uh, entered in your uh, DHS2 or the, the tracker or event program that you set up. So yes, it's possible to do input. So whatever you put as answer will be stored in DHS2 as data value. Hey, hello. Uh, I'm Carlos Tejo from Solid Lines. I have a question for both of you uh, regarding the implementation. Are you of the chatbots? Are you using any kind of special platform for the workflow, or yes, it's just developing a language, from uh, language, and that's all. Using like Rapid Pro or okay. Thank you. Yeah, I can. So uh, I start on the uh, on the DHS two analytics messenger part. So what we have done uh, is to, as you saw, we we had you configure what data you want to be publicly available. So behind the scene, we are using our own uh, implementation for generating the workflow. So we tried to learn to on, learn on how other platforms are working on and are actually doing it for you. So. Uh, that is currently done in that aspect, but the way that we are looking at it in the future is to actually have a more intuitive interface for the users to configure those workflow by themselves. Mm. But as per current, we have our own engine that generate the workflow for you based on the data that you want to be publicly available. Okay, so quickly, yeah. uh, for WhatsApp, what? Yeah, we, we are not using a platform, it is like, uh, Hard coding everything, but uh, for the call, the voice one, we are using something called Asterix. That one is the one platform for voice things, but and then behind now linking information to the results to the ashes two and so forth. Yeah. Okay, is it okay? Yes. Uh, Yeah, the workflow for the voice one also, it is currently did uh, manually, but uh, as uh, uh, Eric said, that will be the next steps. It is to have like an application into the DHS2. We are just thinking about the best, uh, the, the best way to do this kind of workflow. If it is just one step, it is easier, but when it is uh, one for, and then you will have the other steps there, like French. French uh, workflow, English workflow, another language. This one can be some trick. So we are thinking about the best way to do that. But at the end, it will be an application to the DHS2 for this kind of configuration, and then we can link, yeah. Yeah, but now we can think, uh, yeah, okay. That one can be a good thing, a good project, yeah. <laughs> yes, hello, <laughs> may I? <laughs> yeah, example, I know that we start something in saying but it's fine. Yeah, so for example, yeah. for us, we 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 actually uh when generating uh those workflow, mm. we we were looking at how Rapid Pro was working. Mm. But again, we want something that an, an end user could use without any hassle and within the same DHS2. So we're trying to see how better we can have it within DHS2, but mm. a more of a better user experience for someone who doesn't have to learn extra things. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'm Hanan from His Bangladesh. So uh, we are we are implementing a health, uh, urban health system in the last year in 1100 clinics uh, all over the country. So we are trying to, we are using the WhatsApp, but we are trying to use the WhatsApp APIs. But we learned that uh, uh, there's need a business account. Without the business account, we cannot use the WhatsApp APIs. So this is some sort of requirement for the WhatsApp chatbot, what you are using. But uh, one of the part of my uh, answer is already done uh, relating to workflow because of uh, the, uh, the Rapid Pro substitution. So whether we can do a similar thing in the DHS2 or not. So one thing is answered. But my question is for voice whether we have to contact the telecom companies because if we want to bypass because my end user might not have the data so they cannot go through the whatsapp so in that case your the voice part what you showed today whether that's is they are using whatsapp or without whatsapp clear yeah it is comment or questions so it's fine <laughs> <laughs> okay 
Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Yeah, and then I think uh, you you got it right. Uh, I mean, the purpose of having, in addition to WhatsApp, this voice possibility is to give countries uh, the possibility to to use alternative ways when they don't have internet access. So you don't have internet, then and you have a phone, be it landline or your JSM, then you can just call and then answer the questions, go through it, and then the values will be recorded into your DHS2 platform. And you also have the SMS version of it uh, available as well. So if you don't have internet to do WhatsApp, you don't have uh, a time to call, at least you have a possibility to do SMS, then you can also do SMS. Uh, I think that is well. Oh, okay, thank you very much. My name is Peter. My name is Peter from Zimbabwe. Okay, so I saw the demonstration on um your the demonstration that you did on um sending requests to your service to check for results, to send alerts. I was wondering in terms of security prone uh, abuse because I was just comparing to his presentation when he was saying um for you to be able to send a message through the WhatsApp. At least you are authenticated or you are part of a user through DHIS. But your second presentation was like, a, I'm just here sending SMSs or sending those requests. I feel it can be be prone to abuse. I can be I can continually send those alerts, 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 as a hack, for example. Because uh, is there are there any protocols that you have put in place to Counter such kind of uh, abuse within your application. Okay. Uh, thank you for these questions. And uh, uh, that is, uh, first of all, for exams, basically, so exam results are public. Okay. Maybe there is some exams, guys, here, uh, educations. <laughs> but usually, exam results are public in uh, country. So anyone can access it. They just have to go to the, the school center can see it. Okay, so that's that's its first thing. The second one, it is that is why to not allow anyone to go and access the information of the others. Basically, we added the step of name. That means before going to add uh, um, specify the table number of. Uh, the student, you should also add the name of uh, the last name or something like that. Here, it is because of uh, demonstration, we show the list of uh, students. But uh, in a real situation, I can only come and request information regarding me because I know well my uh, last name and uh, my table number. Maybe I can also request for the another people's in my uh, uh, school, uh, like my schoolmates and so forth. That is the second thing. The third one is that for Togo, for example, we decided to just limit the request of information at uh, three per day, at three per uh, hours or something like that. So you can just request this kind of things, uh, not over time, but uh, just like uh, three times. You can request by yourself or for another one, but just three. We don't want people to go beyond uh, his uh, right and doing a request over time without a stopping or something like that. But that is something we decided to put in place uh, so to not uh, allow people to do what they wanted, that uh, the county itself also can give us some limitation they wanted, and this one can also uh, set up into code side. So uh, I think also for our security side, because we have a security section in West Western Africa, they are thinking, this kind of code should be hosted in some servers. It's not like uh, each one to host it, but it is, that one should be hosted in some secure servers. But also, one message to be sent, one people requests, like exam for the first time, is to tell him you are accessing a server for this exam and so forth. Um, you don't want to think that it is personal information or something like that, but there is some message 
regarding a security, we send them also to know that uh, they are reaching some servers and they need to pay attention. I don't know if uh, I answer well the questions, but also if uh, the others want to add it on, that would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I said that uh, you wanted something to add. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the presentation. This is Joseph from Malawi. Um, it's it's good to see how we are trying to use the social media um the 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 app now, especially WhatsApp. So actually, like in Malawi, we've done quite a lot during the COVID time. We use the WhatsApp for for case uh for like reporting, self reporting, and also adverse event as well as rumor, and even to use that to get the vaccination data. So my my question and more or less that question and comment. So for the first presentation, to access the, uh, to get the notification or to get the push of the dashboard, that is one one way, like receiving the information from the main DHIS to instance. Will you consider like uh, from the user perspective, we can query or sending out the request and for the DHIS to, to generate a customized uh, dashboard or analytic product, information product for use. And then uh, that will relate it to my second question, uh, because right now, the way how we prompt or to get the feedback is rule based. So are you are you considering to use some language model or AI to make the dialogue to be more natural language? And in the way that we can have, uh, facilitate the byway um communication more smoothly but otherwise for the second presentation i think that is for very well under the the whole concept of event-based surveillance for the idsr so it's very good work thank you thank you for, for the question so uh concerning the querying part of uh the data from dhis2 uh first of all the, the main reason why uh we didn't give that huge flexibility to query whatever based on how you are understanding uh, DHS2, we had to limit it because one of the features that was actually being questioned is what data is publicly available. Because when you go to the level of the ministries, for example, not everything that is within DHS2 is supposed to be available outside. So it's something that can be done, but based on what we have uh, reached so far, we thought of uh, going in that aspect that first you should allow a particular kind of information that you want it to be available outside. Yeah, but it's something that we, we, we can see on how we can improve on the generation of the workflow. Uh, and secondly, uh, the second question was concerning the... Right now, it's rule based, right? Yeah, exactly. So... I think that's an area where we, 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 we might start to look on because as you can see, the, the conversation is more like fixed, rigid. So it's something that we are taking note and trying to see how we can improve in that area also to bring up that good user experience, of course. So thank you for the comments. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Bet, uh, also working under his Tanzania. Yeah, it's really interesting uh, to see uh, things happening, specifically when using this uh, uh, social media, uh, be able to capture data and also disseminate data. So coming to the second presenter, specifically on uh, rumors, uh, just thinking, uh, we understand that these are rumors that are coming from the community. And uh, these, all of the alerts that are coming from the community might not uh, be of valid alert, which needs some kind of verification at the other end, maybe from the ministry or at different level, maybe starting from the district or the higher level going upward. Uh, is there any possibility of uh, defining a uh, kind of pro procedure when you are setting up these uh, uh, rumors notification, like uh, uh, will you be receiving alert from the community, whether they are true or not? And then who is responsible for the verifying those alerts? And then, uh, discarding uh, those that are not true, uh, just only serving or storing those uh, true alerts. Is that kind of possibility that can be done? Or that should be like known like as a policy or can also be part of the system? Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so uh, currently, basically, 
when people send a draft, so that means there is a, a team who has to go there or something like this. So assuming that someone send an alert into the system, as I say, as I show you here, you have the number of the people. So there is someone who can come back and call back the this uh, number and uh, ask uh, another questions. Yeah, but if they wanted, they can just say that someone can go on the place and check if it is real or not. The form I just show you is not for is not uh, you by default. When someone send a lab, you have some fields. This information can be filled, but now the under you will have like uh, another information if you want to add like uh, pictures or something like that, and uh, you want to confirm. But the form has this kind of information. Now, how the process should be done? That can be the 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 health information system to define it. If there is by call, or someone should go there and so forth. But this one is not by not by the system itself, but it will be. The, the health information system to check it. But by default, since we have like the step in step, we know that when you are going by step in step, we can add like some question to know if you are telling truth or you are not telling truth. So that one can also be managed by the workflow itself. So not put like a workflow simply, but you can think of some like uh, some trick. If uh, the people is just lying also, you can just check it. This one can be a good thing so, to, to follow up with uh, the people working with the surveillance itself, yeah. Yeah, another questions? Is it okay? The time is over or? Please? Yeah, okay. So I don't know if, uh, Adam, you have something to add before closing the sessions or? I think. No. Yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you all for uh, uh, for attending and for uh, the questions and the suggestions. Uh, I think uh, we are very sorry for uh, what happens. We had some technical uh, difficulties because the system was uh, set up on this. Uh, laptop to work and something happened it's crashed not working so we try to catch up quickly but things are not i think we'll have time to reset it up and uh, maybe in the uh, later in the afternoon you can uh, reach out to sakibo to see how it actually works but on the uh, solution in general the idea is to give uh, many alternatives to to people uh, to to be able to send data to dhs2 and also to get uh, some output back so uh, as Hanan said, you have the opportunity to use the internet through uh, uh, the WhatsApp. Uh, you have the opportunity to use the, the voice and also SMS. We have seen also with uh, our friends from Tanzania that you can also get uh, analytics and uh, they have even moved forward to uh, bring in this uh, app to configure the, the entire system. And I think uh, this is a work in progress and next time we'll uh, work on uh, adding more or put more uh, features like uh, integrating the possibility to use uh, other social media platforms. And uh, we really uh, appreciate your, your, your inputs. And uh, if you have some more ideas, please reach out to us and we take them into account. And we are also uh, ready to work with you. If you think this is interesting, we are ready to share the solution with you so that you can go and implement it in your setting. Uh, thank you, Adam. Maybe for me, uh, to thank you, but also to ask Sakibu and Eric, maybe just to tell us if uh, what's the best approach uh, if people wants to really kind of want to contact you guys and see how we can um, use um, innovations which you have created to in your in your implementations. Yeah, we are thinking about maybe we can have a self launch or something like this. Yeah, maybe we can add ourselves into SPF to launch place so if people wanted to come and uh for for those questions also yeah we can have it that will be uh we will have we will be happy to have them there and yeah discuss more thank you
Yeah, and maybe to add on, uh, Sakib had the last presentation slide over there. So in case you have any question or any more information that you want to get, or probably you want this to be implemented within your use cases, you can just reach out to those two emails, info at uh, hisp, uh, westerncentralafrica.org, but also his info at hispanzania.org, and then we can link up more and try to see how further we can move with these two uh, products.